result of the outbreak, your city or entire region may be endangered by a lethal agent. If conditions at your location make this a possibility, you need to consider staying in place until the threat has subsided. That was the B-roll sequence I recently created and a lot of you guys have been wanting to know how I go about shooting these sequences, what camera do I use, what lenses do I use, so I'm gonna break it down for you in this video. Starting with the equipment, I shoot all of my videos uh, on my Sony A7S III and it's a fantastic camera, I absolutely love it. Then for this video, I used two lenses. One of which is my main lens, which is Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master. This is my absolutely favorite lens for B-roll sequences. And I can't stress enough how good this lens is. Now, another lens that I used in this video was a Zeiss Batis 85mm f1.8. This is again a fantastic lens. Uh, and I use this lens for almost all the compressed shots that I want to take in my video. Now for the lighting part, I used a Godox SL200W, which is a fairly powerful light for these kinds of shoots. Now before I start shooting any of these B-roll sequences, the first thing that I do is find my music, because it helps me visualize my sequence better. Now what I'll do is, I'll start preparing a short list that will ensure a smooth workflow. That also helps me prepare a list of equipments and props that I'll be needing in my shoot. Now let's get down to the actual behind the scenes. So for the first shot, I wanted to emphasize on how Charpy was bored and trying to look for an engagement in a computer. So I decided to take a push forward camera movement, keeping my hands as stable as possible. This is the raw footage I got. And as you can see, it is still a little bit shaky. And this is the final shot after adding some color grade and effects. Moving forward, I wanted to take an over the shoulder shot showing Jarvi reading about a donut recipe for which I used my Zeiss Baddies 85mm to really draw viewers attention onto the laptop screen. This is the shot I got. And here's the final shot. Now for the next shot, I switched back to my 24mm G Master lens. This shot was kinda tricky, where the first seamless transition of this sequence is supposed to happen. In this shot, Jarvi is supposed to look ready to make the donut. She shuts her laptop close, takes it behind her from one side, and takes out a mixing bowl to start the process. After the first half of this transition, I tried my best to keep everything still and replaced the laptop with the mixing bowl in her hand. Then I took the second half of the transition, hoping it to match perfectly. This is the first shot with the laptop and then the second shot with the mixing bowl. And this is the final shot with some additional motion blur effect for smooth transition. Next up, we have the shot of flour being drizzled into the mixing bowl. It is important to note that I shoot everything on manual focus. So before taking any shot, I first set the focus on my main subject and then I go ahead to take my shot. Since the last shot ended with the camera tilting downwards, this shot was required to start with camera tilting down as well for a smooth transition. This is the raw footage without any color or effects. 
and this is the final transition. Now in extension to the previous shot, I thought showing flour being drizzled into the mixing bowl is necessary to add to the story. Whenever we talk about storytelling, it is important to plan your shots that are well connected to each other. So we took a couple of tries as I wanted just about right amount of flour falling into the bowl with camera tilting upward towards the end of the shot. This is the raw footage that I got and this is the final shot. Now again for a next shot, I set my focus on the fingertips so that the salt being sprinkled can be seen clearly. Now it is usually very difficult to keep the subject in focus when you are dealing with an aperture as fast as f1.4 but I somehow managed to get a decent looking shot. I also added some key framing for a better looking transition. Moving on, we now have a shot where sugar is to be added to the mix. So trying my best to keep the fingers in focus, I followed Charvi's hand picking up the sugar, coming back over to the mixing bowl and dropped some sugar into it from her palms, ending the shot with the camera tilting downwards again. This was again a difficult shot to keep in focus and I thought I could have done better than this one to be honest. But anyway, this is the final shot after adding some effects. Moving on to the shot we were excited about the most, breaking the egg. This was I think the most difficult shot to nail in this entire sequence, mostly because not everything is in your control, such as breaking the egg in itself. It was also important that the yolk fell inside the container for which Chavi had the idea of hitting the egg on the inside of the rim of the bowl. After a couple of tries, the egg finally broke and I got a fairly decent looking shot. Then added some speed ramping to make it a smooth transition from a previous shot. Next up, we have a shot of different liquids being added to the mix. There is not much to it, but I made some changes to these shots to what I had initially planned. I decided to go easy with this one and took 3 panning shots of the oil, milk and water being poured into the bowl in a similar manner and then added some speed ramping to stitch all of them together. This is the final shot. Now for our next shot, I wanted to show the mix was kind of ruined. So she had to order donuts because they can't be made anymore. So again, for this shot, I set my focus on the subject and then slowly panned the camera from a defocused position to the subject in focus to make it look cinematic. And then I added the ring bell sound effect in post indicating that the donuts have arrived. <laughs> this is the raw footage without any color or effects. And this is the final shot. Moving on to the last shot of the sequence. This is a very similar shot to the previous one. Only to make it a little different and interesting, I decided to push the camera from a slightly tilted angle and gradually straighten the camera as the subject comes into focus. This is the raw footage. Oh. 
and this is the final shot. So that was it, that was the final sequence, uh, we had lots of fun shooting it and I hope you guys liked it and learned something out of it and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, also please do let me know in the comments down below if you want to see uh, more of such b-roll sequences behind the scenes uh, going forward and I'll try to create as much as possible. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.